Good evening. Good evening. Welcome everyone to the Monday, February 10th, 2020 meeting of the Durham County Board of Commissioners. I will share the public charge. The Board of Commissioners asks its members and citizens to conduct themselves in a respectful, courteous manner, both with the board and fellow citizens. At any time, should any member of the board or any citizen fail to observe the public charge, the chair will ask the offending person to leave the meeting until that individual, <coughs> excuse me, regains personal control. Should decorum fail to be restored, the chair will recess the meeting until such time that a genuine commitment to the public charge is observed. As a courtesy to others, please turn off cell phones during the meeting. And I just want to let folks know that we are having trouble with our live streaming tonight, is that correct? Um, so people will be able to hear the meeting in the future, is that correct? Not right now, is that right? Oh, they can, okay, so the people can hear it, but there's no visual, uh, so we apologize. Uh, there's construction going on in our building right now, and so this seems to be the result of that, so we apologize. Um, I will now ask that we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. have any agenda adjustments this evening? Seeing none, I'll move on to the announcements. Voter information for the March 3rd, 2020 primary is as follows. Photo ID is not required for the 2020 primary election. Absentees by mail voting request deadline is February 25th and they must be returned to the Board of Elections by Tuesday, March 3rd. Early voting for the primary election begins this Thursday, February 13th, and ends Saturday, February 29th. And for full details on early voting and other information, please visit www.dcovotes.com. And to let folks know, please go online. Uh, we have eight different early voting sites. There are actually uh, more expanded hours for people to vote. Um, Saturday and Sunday, two weekends, and the last weekend partially on Saturday. Um, so it's really important to, uh, it's on our social media page, it's on the Durham County Board of Elections uh, f Facebook page on website. So please uh, look at that information. And Madam you Chair, could yes. I just uh, say okay. something related to voting mm -hmm. and early voting? One important feature of early voting for anyone who is new to our community and maybe hasn't registered yet uh, is that uh, you can register and vote during early voting. So that's a unique feature of early voting. Um, whereas on election day, you cannot do that. You can right. have to be registered in advance. I just wanted right. to point that out. And something else which those of us who've been at the polls have experienced is that people get confused um, that they come sometimes on election day to the early voting precinct and think they can vote there. And so on election day, you do need to know what your precinct is and to vote in your precinct. Um, whereas early voting is, you know, one stop shop, it doesn't matter. That's a lot of reason why we do encourage people to vote early. Um, so, okay. Uh, Durham Planning Academy sink, seeks spring 2020 applicants. Have you ever wondered what zoning can and cannot do or questioned? how things can uh, get built in Durham? If you answered yes, then you should apply for the next Durham Planning Academy. It's a free 
interactive four-week course that starts on Thursday, March 26th, and it will meet every Thursday for four weeks. Online applications are being accepted right now until Sunday, March 1st. You can apply by going to uh, the, it's a long address, so I would say to go to the Planning Department website. We'll have it on our announcements. You can also uh, contact Kayla Seibel. She's a senior planner at 919-560-4137 is the, uh, and then extension 28271 or email kayla.seibel, S-E-I-B-E-L, at durhamnc.cub. So this is a great opportunity uh, for people to really um, learn about our whole planning process and our comprehensive land use plan and our un unified development ordinances. The Durham County Juvenile Crime Pre Prevention Council, JCPC, is requesting proposals for fiscal year 2020-2021. The JCPC anticipates additional funds from the um, North Carolina Department of Public Safety in the amount of $701,101 to fund programs that will serve delinquent and at-risk youth. Application deadline is March 23rd, 2020, and more information can be found at the Criminal Justice Resource Center's website. There's also going to be two informational meetings for any interested organizations who think they might want to apply. Tuesday, March 10th, and Tuesday, March 17th, 1 to 2.30 p.m. at our Criminal Justice Resource Center, 326 East Main Street. Tax assistance is being offered at VITA sites. The Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program offers free tax help to people who make $56,000 a year or less, people with disabilities and li limited English speaking uh, taxpayers. Also, there is tax counseling for the elderly called TCE, a program which offers free tax assistance to individual 60 years of age or older, specializing in questions related to pensions and retirements. To locate a VITA or TCE site near you, uh, please visit um, www.irs.treasury.gov slash free tax prep. And again, we'll have this on our website, 888-227. Um, 7669. 2020 Golden Leaf Awards nominations are now being accepted. Do you know of a Durham property that's outstanding for its design, preservation, curb appeal, or stewardship of the natural and built environment? Nominate it now for the 2020 Golden Leaf Awards. These uh, nominations can be submitted uh, at DurhamAppearanceCommission.com slash entry dash form. They're due by 5 o'clock on Tuesday, March 13th. And you can contact uh, Kyla Seibel at 919-560-4731, extension 28271, or by emailing her at kyla.seibel at durhamnc.gov. I certainly hope that somebody will be nominating our main library <laughs> for that award. Um, and any additional minutes, I mean announcements. Okay, seeing none, we have our minutes from our regular session, January 27th, 2020. Move approval. Second. <clears throat> Moved by Commissioner Reckile, seconded by Commissioner Howerton. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the uh, minutes are unanimously approved. We have a number of 
consent agenda items this evening, and a lot of them are very important. So um, I don't know if any commissioners would like to just make any brief comments on some of them. Um, I know I wanted to, but I want to first hear what if anybody else wants to, to highlight any of, there's some really great things on our consent agenda. Okay, well, well I'll, okay, I'll just, uh, <laughs> you opened the door, so I'll, I'll comment. Yes. Uh, I just want to thank our uh, Open Space and Trails Commission for bringing forward another set of matching grants program projects. We have four projects totaling $76,700. Uh, the program works with nonprofits, providing matches and we have done some amazing work over the past about 30 years. Um, but the projects that will be funded with this cycle include LRB Creek Watershed Association will be receiving $30,000 uh, for continued land um, preservation work. Maureen Joy Charter School, $5,000. The Durham Parks Foundation, 6,700, and El Futuro, 35,000. So um, I'm pleased that we have a great range of projects. And um, again, I want to thank the committee and commission for all their work. Mr. Howerton? I'll comment on, on one. Um, this is the youth home. Um, I think my board know my passion around that, and I really want to thank the staff for all the research and the commitment that they did to really bring this to us, because it's taken quite a number of years, and that we have a, a youth home that's been, um, that really has been there over, what, over 30-some years, or has it been longer than that, over 40 years? Yeah. Uh, 40 years that has been is really in pretty disarray and with the raise the age uh, we will be seeing more young people that are needing um, a place to stop for a minute and um, this will be a comprehensive center and we are just um, proud that we are and thankful for the staff that they put worked on this for a long time and put this together. So I'm, I'm really appreciating that because we don't have any throwaway kids and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure that um, they're ready to take on life and be healthy and whole. And I just have a quick question about this, Angela, and this is sparked from um, a training that I did this weekend with Equality NC. And one of the things I was thinking about was the design of the youth home because, unfortunately, there's a very high correlation uh, between kind of the education to prison, prison pipeline um, and just health disparities and all kind of bullying and things like that related to trans youth. And so I was thinking about the design of the youth home. Has there been any discussion about? how a, that kind of accommodation would be made, and just thinking about trans youth. Uh, there's a disparate, uh, with the data, a disparate um, number of trans youth of color that end up in, um, you know, in detention or in some type of uh, incarceration situation. So just something to think about. It is. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, we have not thought of anything specifically for tra transgender youth. Um, the design of the new facility is thinking about the safety of all the juveniles who come into our facility, so those youth would be incorporated into the safety procedures as well. Okay. 
Well, I would just say to put that on your radar, you know, thinking about, again, you know, showers, bathrooms, the housing, that we're able to accommodate whoever we need to accommodate safely. Yes, right. we will do that. And we also have PREA standards that we have to uh, pay attention to as well that does address some of those issues. Okay, great, thank you. So I just wanted to highlight a few things. One is um, we're getting a van for veterans services. I uh, see we have staff out here, our director and other staff, and I know this is something the community has really wanted. Um, we had gotten a lot of emails about it and just being able to get out into the community and reach more of our veterans uh, where they are and make sure that they're getting all of the benefits that they deserve um, and are entitled to. So that is awesome. Um, I want to acknowledge that we're um, increasing funding for bus amenities, uh, which is really exciting. Over $2 million for um, bus stops, doubling our, our budget, or at least adding another half a million for that for this year. So that's fantastic. Um, I want to acknowledge our economic, our revised uh, economic development incentives policy. Andy, where are you? There you are. Andy Miracle, who has worked how long have you been working on this, Andy? How long? Two years. Two years, wow. So um, I hope people will get a chance to look at it because we have really tried to incorporate um, community benefits um, into our policy and also building a relationship with our companies um, related to our education to jobs pipeline, increasing uh, things like minority purchasing, hiring, um, uh, hiring second chance um, employees, childcare, daycare, sustainable building, uh, TDM, lots of different um, important things that benefit our community. So thank you for your hard work on that. Um, I do have, we do have one person signed up to speak, Mr. Chavis. Uh, did you want to speak on item 20 That is the item related to the public art. And if you just come forward, state your name and address, and you have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Good afternoon to the councils and to all the one. This is related to the library, but it also related to the building across the street, urban ministry, which you all are trying to get removed from that area and have not tried to put any more money into that urban ministry to help hold the people that need because of the surrounding area. You all need to look into that and stop trying to get them to remove the, allow y'all to take the land and remove the needs of the people. You're talking about putting money in everything else. Talk about putting money where we, the people, need it the most. These people at Urban Ministry need some help and they need their building to be repurposed some. Y'all have not put that in the budget because you all are continuing to try to get them to close it down. It's an eyesight, but it's not. It's a workable site for the people if y'all look into it the right way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chavis. And I just want to clarify, we're not trying, we have no plans to remove the facility. As a matter of fact, we actually just allocated an additional $56,000 for the renovation of the cafe. And, and our total funding for the urban ministries, it far exceeds what the city gives to urban ministries. What is the amount, uh, Mr. Manager, do you know, or Drew? Good evening, Commissioners. Our, our total annual funding to urban ministries is $352,000 and change. 
So that's actually more than the city gives to I'm the. I'm not talking about the city right now. I'm talking about the. Shelter. Right, but we 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 have no plans to not support the shelter. And again, we just allocated additional funding of fifty six thousand to pay for help pay for the renovation of the cafe. Okay, so, I, I, I'll, yeah. I'll check back into it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. And we have some, uh, let's see, we have Mr. C.J. Broderick signed up to speak on. Okay. Um, to speak on item um, 20066, which is our uh, revision of our economic development incentive policy. And if you please come forward, just state your name and address. Thank you. Yes, C.J. Broderick, um, 3715 Suffolk. This is uh, somewhat of a comment on um, item 0066, but more of a broad comment. I am the president and CEO of the Greater Durham Black Chamber of Commerce. I know both the city and county, but where the county has been, have been talking about inclusive economic development for a couple of years now. In June of last year, I submitted a proposal um, to all the county commissioners, as well as the county manager, um, to consider funding for the first time ever the Greater Durham Black Chamber of Commerce. I know a lot of people think that um, we're a funded organization and, and believe so, but we've not been funded by either the county or the, the city in our 10 years of existence. And so, um, you know, it's great to come to, to these uh, commissioner meetings and see all the different things that are happening, exciting things happening around, around, around our county. Um, my comment and question to all of you is I know we continue to you know, to, to propose shared and inclusive economic development. And we understand that race is the strongest indicator of outcomes across all systems, right? We continue to focus on affordable housing, transit, homelessness, and all those different things are, are great to focus on, but we understand that the root cause of many of these things is systemic and structural racism. But when it comes to economic development, we fail to fund an organization such as the Chamber that can lend a racial equity lens in strategic planning in economic development. Um, and I think it's a very, 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 very grave misstep and, 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 and failure of all of our parts to really plan and execute a sound strategy for equitable economic development. And so as it relates to the amended economic development plan, I would encourage um, the, 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 the town manager and the economic development officer to include, um, I know one of the points on there is meeting with partner organizations, so on and so forth, but to include um, the Greater Durham Black Chamber of Commerce as a partner organization because we're seldom uh, consulted and contacted as it relates to the, those kind of things. But also, for the first time ever in this 150 year history of Durham, I would encourage you all to, to, to have some kind of funding um, for the Greater Durham Black Chamber of Commerce to put some money behind all the words that we hear about equitable economic development, shared prosperity, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that's a really good suggestion about explicitly referring to work, working with you all. We do we list a lot of partners that we ask businesses to, you know, work with NC Works and with Durham Tech and and CCU Bright Center, and so that's a really great suggestion to explicitly um, include that reference in our policy. Thank you. Yeah, I think the caveat, uh, just to follow up your comment, I think the caveat is that we are probably one of, we're probably the only organization that represents a large spectrum of businesses um, that are Durham County businesses for the most part, and and understand what it, what it takes for their businesses to grow. So if we understand that race is the number one indicator of, of, uh, across all, all systems, then it's very, very, to me, um, simple and pointed to, to focus on that. Um, you, you mentioned um, workforce development, you mentioned NCCU and other organizations, but not many of them focus primarily on that factor. And I think there's an opportunity to, to, do, that, to do that with this. Okay, thank you. And we have um, 
Waldo Fenner. Is Waldo here? And Waldo has signed up to speak on the uh, item related to the youth home and also the physician uh, extender position at the uh, in public health and also let me get it all the, uh, in uh, it, the how, outreach yes homeless street outreach thank you like i'm pleased to hear that you all are doing my name is waldo family live at 1119 clarence street durham north carolina I am pleased to hear you all talking about the youth home that I've been discussing for the last 20 years that is in need. Uh, I'm deeply concerned, though, is that, that it took this length of time to, for you guys to understand what human life really means, because you say it, but I have not seen you put forth the money or the effort to do anything differently about it. Now, I have seen you put the effort towards a dog shelter. Mm -hmm. I have seen you put efforts towards building a jailhouse, building a courthouse, but I haven't seen you put the effort to do anything for the youth. Now, I'm trying to figure out, did this idea come before or after one of our children had to die in a detention center? Because that's disturbing to me. That should have never happened. So I am pleased that you all uh, are doing this because I've been asking about the youth center for a long time, like I said before. There is a box in there like a cage, like you got animals in there now, and you just now seem to do anything about it. Which again, I am pleased that you decide to do something now. And that goes back to your credibility uh, amongst a lot of things that I can tie into this is with the property tax, the $160 million that we have no accountability for, but yet you put a great agenda together in amount of no time at all and express everything that you need to express, but you all can't express where the $160 million went to. Okay, we'll get to it sooner or later. So with that said, again, I'm mean, pleased that you all decide to do something with that youth home. But I'm not pleased with you giving Go Triangle permission to do just what they want to do with our $160 million and charge us more property tax. I'm not pleased about that at all. But I can't afford to keep paying for a home I already paid for 30 years. And they try and pay $2,400 in property tax, double it within one year. So it make any sense. Stuff needs to be done about that. So I'm going to move on because I don't have, it's not on your agenda. What I am going to move on to is the extended, uh, physician extended thing for downtown. I'm confused as to why you want to spend money for a physician when you all won't spend the money for a dental, for more dental uh, dentists down there at the Lincoln Community Center. You have to wait two or three months for an appointment. That's unacceptable. Your elderly and young folks who are poor are the ones who have to use that, those facilities and those services, but yet you seem to forget, except when it comes tax time and voting time. You're dead on spot then. So where is the money for dental at Lincoln? And if you're saying we don't own dental uh, Lincoln anymore and Duke has it, then I'd like to know how did Duke get it without you putting it on the ballot for the people to, to say hey, yay or nay on it. Is it the same way you did during Durham Regional Hospital. So if you gave that away, you should have the money to- Mr. Venner, I'm gonna ask you to wrap your comments yeah, up. I'm gonna wrap Thank it up you. real quick, real quick. And Ms. Jacobs, for you, I'm very curious, did you conspire with some of your fellow council members to set up this man over here with Ms. Wendell, uh, Wend what's her name, Walt Walton? Walton? Or did you back out the deal and set her up to file a complaint against that man over there? Either way, it doesn't matter. Mr. Fenner, I'm going to ask finish. you to wrap up your okay. question. It's, it's been finish. way over three minutes, sir. Okay. I ain't see the clock, but thank you. Okay. But, and uh, that's also not an agenda item, right. and it's a personal So I'm going to leave that item. alone, but let you know, since you want to go that route, we're going to make sure that you're not, you don't have that seat. Thank you for letting me share. I, I want to address one yes. thing. I just want to address one thing. So, so one of my hot buttons is when we talk about our youth, 
And I want you to know, sir, that I've been pushing for years for that facility to be redone. And it couldn't, we couldn't just do it automatically, just like in a, it take, it's taken time, it's taken planning and preparation, and we've had staff people working on that for a long time to get to this point. So the resources are being put in there to rebuild that, to build another facility. And if it's not just a facility, it'll be a place where our children come out, where they'll have the comprehensive care that they need to. So I just want you to know that that is not gone unnoticed, not at all, not over here. Because that's, that's one of the things that I ran on in the beginning is, is about our young people. So I will never go allow that to go unnoticed, not by me. You're welcome. Okay. Well, we don't, we don't have to leave it alone because it, it's a young people are who we, we're here for, not for us as far as, okay. yeah. Okay. I say something. No, I'm gonna do it once. Gotcha. Commissioner Hill. If I could say something about the youth home. Number one, that is a function of the state. The state of North Carolina was supposed to fund our youth home. There are only two communities in the state of North Carolina that fund their youth home. That's Guilford County and us here in Durham because we don't want our children dispersed across the state. And I think Durham should be getting kudos, right, for being one of the two um, communities in the state that just doesn't bust its um, young people uh, here and there and separate families. And we do more to protect our children here in Durham than most people do in the state of North Carolina. The failure is in the General Assembly. The failure is on Jones Street. The failure is with Phil Berger. And that's who you need to talk to. But we're not going to have a conversation here. This is not, this is not what happens. Now, Ms. Commissioner Hill is providing you information, but this is not. Uh, and I just want to also clarify, there was a number of things that were inaccurate, but your property tax does not fund the transit. We have a half cent sales tax for transit, so there is no transit funding that comes out of your property tax. Okay. Um, we are going to, uh, I just have two quick questions related to items that are on the agenda. Um, one is related to the interlocal agreement for the sports commission, because the two items that are actually on our consent agenda that were not on our work session, one is the funding, uh, the transfer of capital funding to Durham, Durham Public Schools, and the second is the sports commission. Um, so could you just give us a little background about this, Drew, because we haven't really talked about it at all. On the Sports Commission. Yeah, the, the new interlocal. Yes, good evening, Commissioners. So um, you're right that that didn't come to the work session, which would normally be the way we do it. We have been working on this new interlocal for months and months and didn't have the ability to kind of squeeze it into the, the tight agenda last Monday, but did want to keep it moving. Uh, the, Sports Commission is now, I think, four years old. Uh, it has produced a great number of new events and revenue for the community. The main reason that some new interlocals are coming back, the first was that the original interlocal expired, a three-year interlocal. You'll remember that we did a one-year extension so they could keep booking events kind of further out. Uh, so that was one reason. The second reason was that the original funding formula that we had established uh, was going to create a kind of rapidly increasing uh, sort of um, revenue stream for the Sports Commission. We're happy to support them, but the occupancy tax in general is a more slowly, steadily growing revenue source, and so there was a desire on part of both the city and county staff to kind of recalibrate that funding. It's still on a positive trajectory, uh, still should allow some sort of a, a growth mindset and, and allow them to explore some new arenas. 
uh, but we think we, we landed in a good spot. We had a number of meetings with the, the Sports Commission Board, um, staff from Discover Durham and city staff, um, and I think we landed in a good spot for that. So. I guess my, one of my reactions was just that even the amount of funding is very small compared to our neighboring sports commissions. I guess that's really one of my... We don't have time to discuss that now, but $350,000 a year for a sports commission when what is Greensboro and Raleigh, our competitors have, you probably can tell I, us. I would add that, that the, a lot of income. The, the, yeah. the focus of the interlocal is what the yeah. city and county contributions yeah. will be. Yeah. Uh, Discover Durham is also obligated under the interlocal yeah. to put in a substantial additional amount. I don't remember yeah. off Correct. the top of my head what it is now. For yeah. FY19, we put in 495000 Okay. So the two combined are what op allow us to operate the sports commission. So, and what is the budget for, wait, for Greensboro and Raleigh? I couldn't tell you what those are. But yes, it's significantly more. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Okay, and just related to the school funding, um, I guess my question was, how does this impact the money that is going to be al allocated for elementary school? and because it sounds like this is coming out of the 2016 bond money. So how does this impact Northern High School, Elementary School C? I just wasn't sure how this all works. There's currently 50 plus million dollars of GEO bonds allotted for Northern High School. Elementary School C, which you all have discussed with the Board of Education, is approximately 39 million leaves 11 million left to support an increased funding for Northern that's now 100 plus million, 101. This would just take 3 million of that and make the county have to find either through general, uh, another general obligation bond in 2022 or more likely LOBS funding to support it. This doesn't fundamentally change anything for either Northern Elementary School C or the projects listed here. And is this included in the 493? million that you all proposed last week? Or? No, ma'am. This is, no, ma'am. No? Okay. Yeah. Part of this is, a, a small part of this is adjusting dollars from existing 2016 geobond projects that were finished, had some extra money in it, and those funds were moved to new projects, and then $3 million was taken from the Northern High School project to three other projects. Yeah. This, this actually was on our work session. I remember it seeing it. Um, but most of it is just moving. Some projects had savings out of them. Some needed new um, money. But it's just a, a small delta increase. It's not a, a lot. And so it's easily accommodated and still being able to fund elementary C with the leftover in the... 2016 bond. That is correct. Mm -hmm. It actually was originally on, but it got removed because their staff didn't come. Well, I guess I yeah. read it. Yeah. I mean, I, it was supposed it to wasn't be new. We had to check with bond council yeah. to make sure that the, some of the projects yeah. that were coming down the line could fit under geo bonds, and I think we got that approval. Yeah. Okay. I, re I recall us going over it. Doc. Right, but it got removed yeah. at, when we had our meeting. It got removed. Okay, so we have... Uh, items 20-0032 through 20-0062 yeah, through 0067. Yeah. Consent agenda items. Second. Moved by Commissioner Carter, seconded by Commissioner Hill. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the consent agenda is unanimously approved. Okay, next, we have a public hearing on uh, a, a allocation of economic development funds to Eli Lely and Company, 20-0065. Uh, Andy Miracle. Here to tell good, us about it. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Andy Miracle, Economic Development with Durham County. 
Commissioners, the board is requested to hold a public hearing to consider allocating a total of $2,550,000 in economic development funds to Eli Lilly and company, and to authorize the manager to enter into preliminary negotiations and execute an agreement for the company, or for the county. Eli Lilly, a global healthcare and biopharmaceutical company, will bring a pharmaceutical manufacturing facility to Durham County to help produce and develop medicines for people with serious illnesses, creating 400, 462 new jobs and investing $440 million. Approximately half of those jobs will require an associate's or vocational degree, and all jobs meet the Durham County living wage policy. Eli Lilly was established in 1876 and has been attacking some of the world's most serious and debilitating chronic health uh, conditions such as diabetes, cancer, autoimmune co conditions, and Alzheimer's disease, all among the world's leading causes of death or disability. The new manufacturing site will be an advanced facility that both researches and develops new medicines as well as produces injectable products and delivery devices for serious health conditions. Eli Lilly's project in North Carolina will be facilitated in part by a JDIG, a Job Development Investment Grant approved by the state's Economic Investment Committee on January 21st, 2020. With the $440 million investment, the project is anticipated to generate $5.3 million in new property tax revenue over five years. This is more than double the award amount and will support the county in providing additional service delivery. Durham County payments to be spread over a seven-year window will occur only following performance ver verification that the company has met and or maintained its incremental job creation, investment, and criteria targets. With approval of the award, the company has agreed to make reasonable efforts to participate in several workforce partnerships that include engagement with Durham Public Schools Career and Technical Education, Durham Tech, NC Works Career Center, the Library Steam Center, CJRC, among others. Additionally, the company maintains many policies that align with the county, such as an MWB program, willingness to hire just involved individuals, the provision of childcare, and many policies and programs that truly value their workforce. Please find additional project details, including a full list of partnership terms, description of employment opportunities, and project attributes in the briefing sheet attached to the agenda item. Staff is recommending that the county provide $2,550,000 in economic development investment funds to Eli Lilly and company and authorize the manager into preliminary negotiations and execute an agreement with the company. The public hearing has been advertised as required by law. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for Andy at this point? Okay, I will now open the public hearing. We have one person signed up to speak, Brian Fox. You come forward and state your name and address, and you have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, Commissioners, Manager, Attorney, Staff, and Neighbors. Brian Fox, 909 Exum Street. On behalf of the Greater Durham Chamber of Commerce, I want to applaud you all and our many partners on facilitating another tremendous opportunity for our residents. So much of what we are all doing to increase community prosperity is intangible, but this enables a great company to join many more here as a diverse employer and purchaser, major investor in all county initiatives, and great corporate citizen, including many commitments along our newly updated policy for these performance-based grants. Thank you all. Thank you, Brian. And we have Mr. C.J. Broderick. Good evening. Good evening. All right, so. I, I'm so sorry if you just, just for oh, the yeah. record. If you 715 Suffolk Street, Durham, North Carolina. Thank you. Um, I didn't plan on saying anything, but I just realized that I had to. Um, this is a great example of what the conversation we're trying to have about inclusive and equitable 
economic development, right? Now, on his face, it's a great idea to give Eli Lilly a bunch of money to come here and give us you know, jobs and invest in our economy and so on and so forth, right? But we should have enough foresight by now to see what happens five years later or two years later, so on and so forth, when a bunch of people that are getting paid a lot of money to work for Eli Lilly decide they want to live at a certain area, right? And then that area gets this, people that live there at a certain price, they get this place, and then we say, oh, we're gonna do some affordable housing, and so on and so forth, right? So in the absence, in the absence of a strategic partner to say how we can do economic development in an equitable fashion, we continue to say yes to whoever wants to come in and give us some money, right? Because the people who's, the people who are not here rep being represented that, 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 that work in certain areas that, that have low, low paying jobs would have economic development opportunities that are just not at this two million, two billion hour level, their concerns are not heard here, right? And so what I've been trying to explain to most of you commissioners and, and, and county managers that in the absence of having a, a partner agency for the Durham Chamber and for Andy and his staff to, to, to work with, to talk about not just what happens when you get all the money, right, and we can create all these, all these jobs, people come in making $100,000, what, what happens then? We have to also plan, whenever we bring a big company in, we have to, we have to also to, do take the time to plan for what, for what can happen for everyone else in the area that will be affected. And we're not doing that right now. We're not doing that. And so as a result, we run the same cycle over and over and over. We give Eli Lilly 2.5 million, they come in, everybody's making $200,000, and they decide, oh, you know, let's all move to this area within two miles. And then that area gets redeveloped, and the people that were living there before can't afford to pay their taxes anymore. And then, then we say, oh, well, what are we gonna do? Let's do more affordable housing. It's a vicious cycle, right? We need to, if we're thinking about econ economic development, and, and if we're thinking about doing equitable and inclusive economic development, on the front end, right, don't call me in and say, oh, well, we want to figure out how we can give 10% of this Eli project to some, some, some black people that own truck companies that can haul the dirt off. That's, that, that's how we're doing economic development, equitably. It's not, right? Before the trees, I'm gonna end, I see you lean, I'm, I'm gonna end. Before the trees get cut, before we dig holes in the ground and, and plant and, and do all the civil engineering, and, and before we fly over to do, to do um, you know, to, to take surveys, right? Before all of that is done, this is where inclusive economic development starts, by ensuring that before anything happens, that some, somebody's thinking about the people that are gonna have to be displaced as a result of all the money that we're paying in, in, in these incentives and taxes. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Broderick, I encourage you to take a look at this policy and as we are starting our budget process to come up with a proposal of a role that you could play because specifically you have some great suggestions and ideas. And for instance, with Eli Lilly, um, some of the things that they have agreed to, when you look at the briefing sheet um, that you should- I've read the briefing sheet, yeah. Right, and so they've agreed to things like um, a uh, minority purchase, to participate in minority purchasing- That's a joke. Trade events, to um, have a diversity purchasing program. Another with, joke. With MWBE. Talk. You have a proposal for me from, right. from June. So I'm just saying, there, there's a Agreed, agreed. I understand what you're saying. Just one, I, one second. I just encourage you to take a look and be great to have your participation. I agree. One, what's one second? Yes. You have a proposal for me from June of last year. The same proposal. Andy has it too, right? Right. Well, Wendell it, has it. To the manager. But right. The manager has it also. But here's, here's the thing, right? It's not that hard, right? What you all have to do is to say, Brian and I are really good friends, you have to say, Brian, Andy, whenever you're reaching out to a new company to come in, also, we're going to employ, we're going to, the same way we contract your organizations, we're also gonna contract another organization like the chamber or the chamber to work with you to figure out what we can do to have equitable economic development. So then when it comes back, when, 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 when Eli is, is making a presentation, we can also say, oh yeah, 
that can happen, but we, we, you know, there's, this other thing can happen also because we expect some displacement, right? We're not talking about that second part right now because you all are not doing that part to, to require it, right? That, that's, what, that's what's not happening. Thank you. Okay, any, any other comments, public comments? Okay, I will now close the public hearing. Any other uh, board questions or comments? Andy. I just want to say that um, I, I, it, it's very positive that um, Eli Lilly chose to follow our draft policy, and we have such a long list of commitments. So I want to thank the staff and, and the chamber for working with them on these commitments. I do want to highlight that they have agreed to do a child care um, facility or pre-K center. Um, I had the opportunity of visiting the Biogen child care center in RTP and it's absolutely terrific. So uh, if they need Andy a place to visit to see a good model of what they can do, uh, maybe they can get a look at uh, the center at Biogen uh, because it's it's fantastic. I also want to thank you for following up on the concept of having them promote transportation demand management and have a, a TDM coordinator. This site is off of one of our more congested highways, I-40, and having um, provisions in place to encourage flex time and telecommuting and van pools and carpools and all of that will be uh, very, very important as um, they move forward. So I want to thank you for all of your work, thank the chamber, and um, look forward to seeing them commence their construction. So thank you. Your comments, questions, Commissioner Carter. Well, I would just also say thanks so much to Andy and our staff. Um, I, this company does seem to have one of the more robust um, levels of commitment to us. Um, you know, over and above how they're going to earn the award um, by virtue of the new tax revenue, which will be more than twice the award and the 462 new jobs, all of which pay above the uh, Durham's medium wage for, the air, for those positions. Um, I mean, that is one thing uh, that we need to work on, and there are ways in which this company is moving towards helping us work on that, and that is being sure our people here in Durham get these great jobs. There are many ways that they're going to be contributing to our workforce development system, including paid summer internships, which is something we're always trying to, to, to get from our private industry. So I am really pleased that this is the first company that we're approving an award for under our new policy and that they're such a model um, of a private industry uh, making substantial community benefits over and above the um, jobs and the increased tax revenue. Oh, and I was just going to also say, if our residents get these jobs, then their salaries will, will be keeping pace with the costs that are going up, and hopefully that will indeed help people stay in their homes. So that's really what we have to do is work on our residents getting the jobs. Mr. Howerton. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I just don't want night in without acknowledging what you said, Mr. Broderidge. Um, I do, I remember receiving proposal and um, I'd like to hear more from you and, and, and with our staff the where we go with this. Because I, I don't want you to just present it and then nothing happens, at least without us taking a look at to see what can be done. I, I just didn't want that to go on 
address and to go on record and saying that with our staff and manager just, just to that we hear you and we'll look for guidance from our manager and staff to see where do we go with it. So and I just want to acknowledge again that um, just to some of the basics about this, this is the first Fortune 200 company we've ever had in Durham County. Um, and their private foundation is, I believe, the second biggest private foundation in the United States, and they are very charitable. One of their biggest priorities is early childhood investments and uh, universal pre-K, and so we're, I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm really excited about the fact that out of the 462 jobs that are going to be created, um, more than half of them will be accessible to people with a associate's or vocational degree with starting salaries of about $50,000 a year. So with the funding that we supply to Durham Tech, it means that Durham High School graduates can go to Durham Tech for with a Durham County scholarship and they can get an associate's degree or get the certification and then they could go and work at Eli Lilly um, and make $50,000 a year starting salary, which I'm sorry to say is way above what a teacher would make as a starting salary. And this is also a plus benefits. This is one of the really important ways that we address poverty in our community is by people having a wage where they can sustain themselves uh, and their families. And um, so there are all ty types of degrees, operators, maintenance, engineering, maintenance, warehouse, um, administrative support, utilities, crews, and they all go up from 50, about almost 50 to over 67,000 starting. So these are really good jobs. We need to make sure that Durham residents are prepared for and connected to these jobs. Um, so, uh, and then there's also a very significant state. Andy, if you could go remind us, what is the state contributing to this? Uh, approximately $9 million, is that correct? Yeah, uh, just, just under it maybe 8.9, it's uh, shy of $9 million. And some of that is specifically for job training, is that right? Is that some of it JDIG, or is it specifically there, there's for? There's probably a customized training uh, component to that for um, company employees. Uh, I, th that's, I think it was 1.2 million of that was specifically for training, with partnering with the community college system. Right, and, and just to clarify, yeah. the, the customized training dollars, if, if that is indeed the amount in the program, um, are, are directed for company employees um, as part of their onboarding and, and mm -hmm. entry into uh, company positions. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so look forward to Eli Lilly being a part of the Durham community and being a role model for other companies. And Mr. Broderick, we'll, you'll follow up with the county manager and staff as well with your proposal we can consider in the future. Thank you. Madam Chair, I would move approval of the item. Second. Okay, moved by Commissioner Reckow, seconded by Commissioner Carter. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the item is unanimously approved. Okay. So other business were our directives, which we have we did not discuss at our work session. So um, any directive items that commissioners would like to discuss? Madam Chair, when we approved the minutes of some past meetings, I think it may have been at our last meeting, it was a work session back, I think, in November. Um, there was a discussion, I think it's highlighted in the directives, that um, 
we need to follow up on the issue of um, transportation demand management within county government and look specifically at the whole issue of um, paid parking, um, particularly in our decks for um, county employees. I did note at a recent meeting that I learned from the director of transportation for the city that city employees do pay for parking and there's a gradient a lower rate for surface parking and a higher rate for deck parking. So um, I just want to raise it because we learned when we uh, approved the project, uh, the first agreement for the projects on the 300 and 500 blocks of East Main, that we will be deciding on a key agreement this summer that also includes tying down the parking for the 500 block. And to be ready to do that, I do think we've got to uh, look at what we can do proactively to better manage our demand within county government. So I just wanted to highlight that directive. I'm not sure how much work's been done since November, but just to say the clock's ticking and I wanted to highlight it. And I'll, I'll underscore Ellen's <laughs> highlight. I, I agree. I um, was at the Environmental Affairs Board meeting on Monday night, and Perry did a great job of presenting to them um, the information about the 300 uh, redevelopment project. And they just had a lot of input on the desire to decrease parking within the 300, much, much less try to right-size it in the 500. So I know there's... You know, if they were making recommendations to us, it would, they would also be underscoring what you said about needing to manage our demand better. That was on my list as well. <laughs> so, uh, Commissioner Hill. Sure, I, I agree. We should try to make our community more walkable, but this is somewhat, I think, regressive. Um, if we look at the demographic of our workforce from the county, we're dealing with a lot of moms, right? A lot of um, single moms, right? And to acquire them to pay for parking, I think, would be unfair, right? Um, public transit is not good enough in Durham for them to get up, get kiddo, get kiddo to school, then get back downtown and, and, and get to work. So I, I understand, you know, the, the overall. Um, public good that you're trying to achieve, but I, I think if we look at our employees, I, th I think it's a bit regressive, and I think we should. I think free parking is so we, is, is important. We could, we could debate the merits of each different yeah. initiative yeah. later, but yeah. we do need staff to bring us back options. Right. Yeah. And I think what, I think it was March, wasn't Mr. Manager? Wasn't the plan it would be on our Mar March work session that we would be. Uh, staff will be coming back to us with. Well, I think we had agreed on a certain. I know we said we would need it in time for. Uh, yes, Commissioner, we can ha provide you an update in March. Mm -hmm. um, again, it would just be uh, an update, you know, particularly mm -hmm. talking about the work that has been done with Go Triangle, the city of Durham. Uh, any feedback that we get back from the Environmental Affairs Board. Uh, as I stated previously, there is a lot of work going on. We actually have another meeting scheduled, I think, on the 24th uh, with various departments as well as um, Go Trying on the City of Durham to talk about some of these uh, potential incentive, incentives or uh, potential reductions that we uh, could possibly make again that has to be vetted with IS and T with HR other departments have to sort of give us the nod on some of these ideas and um, again like I say we could come in March with an update but again please understand that we're truly trying to flush some of these uh, potential solutions out and so again it would be an update okay thank you Commissioner Howard I, I, I agree with um, Mr. Hill 
when we talk about beginning to charge our employees for parking, it, you know, we just got them to a compensation, to a competitive salary, and then to turn around and take it away by having to make them par pay for parking, I, I think it's kind of inhumane. So if, if when we go into this conversation, we need to consider who we charging for parking and so, how employees work too hard for us to start to do that. So we'll, we'll hear back from staff and in March, and we'll, we'll talk about the details then. I think the main thing was just making sure we keep this on our radar. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other items that people saw in the directives that they want to follow up on? Commissioner Carter. Did anyone else have trouble seeing the directives? I used to be able to see them. Anyway, if no one did, I'll follow up with um, I, the IT team after, but there's something weird going yeah, on. I, I'm having really? problems with that, I guess, it's, yeah. <laughs> like I hit the link and it goes to the spreadsheet, the lead-in page, and then it just disappears. Oh, wow. Okay. I did not have any trouble. Did anyone else have trouble? I did. I just well. followed. Um, you had trouble too? There's link. Okay. I, so three people it's did. My, it may be something with my iPad, like I haven't had service or something. I don't know. Okay. 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 Well, <clears throat> While we're on directives, mm -hmm. could I raise yes, yes. a directive to, mm -hmm. based on something we learned at Joint City-County com Planning Committee meeting last week that Brenda, Wendy, and I were at? We learned that the consultant uh, on Engage Durham um, has been let go, and I would just... I would just be curious because we contributed a lot of extra money. We, we got some follow-up information about that. Maybe after you left. Okay. Um, but um, there's but really only about fifty thousand left, and that money is going to be used for um, the actual ambassadors program, which is is very cost intensive, and translators, childcare, helping people that we're trying to reach. Um, paying, okay, paying so the ambassador. I would like to so, then an accounting of how much we spent on the consultant um, that was discharged. Can we, can we get that, please? Thank you. So, um, any other directives? Nobody else could see them. Okay, so I'll just, I'm just going to touch on some of the ones that seem to need follow up. There were some follow ups about data. Um, one was trying to get data related to um, pre-K data from Durham Public Schools through, and where are we at with that? So Linda and I meet regularly and talk about how Durham pre-K is going, and that specific request has been one that she has, uh, that specific request is one that she has brought repeatedly to their attention. Uh, the last I spoke with Linda last week, she was pretty sure that um, Dr. Hardy was going to help her get that information. So okay. it is important. I, I think you understand this that we, we need to make sure that all of the the funding and the efforts are cumulative and rising. Um, Title One funding that's going to pre-K, for example, you know we're we're not trying to supplant as we or, or to. I think that's the right word, as, as we try to increase our effort to help uh, add pre-K into all the elementaries. Okay, thank you. Could you keep us posted on that? And then... will. It'll, it'll stay in yellow until we... Okay. Have... The other issue I saw was related to some of the data that we've requested from the Office of the Sheriff, uh, jail data numbers, and... Also, um, since the mental health pod for women has not been implemented, um, what, how that money is being reallocated for 10 positions. Good evening, commissioners. Yeah. Um, we've asked several times for the data from the sheriff's office as requested by the board. Uh, going back to last fall, 
Uh, we received some initial data that was in a spreadsheet uh, format that we were unable to decipher and have followed up several times to get assistance in that data. Have, have yet to receive that data in a form that we can use and understand. Um, we are meeting with the sheriff and his team later on this week to talk about this issue and a few other follow-up issues. <coughs> and so we will remind them of the board's interest and desire to receive the data. Regarding the mental health um, female pod, uh, that's also on our list to follow up and have discussions on. I don't know the status of that implementation at this point. So, uh, following up on Commissioner Jacobs' question, which is a really good one, I hope that from Thursday's meeting we will also learn uh, what the status of the funds are that were allocated for the mental health pod. Are they still available in the budget or were they the spent in another way? are still available within the budget. So they haven't, so they have the, those resources filled. have not been used? They have not been filled that I'm aware of and this was going back a few weeks when we looked at the vacancy data. Okay. Well, you know, I, I just hope we can um, get to an understanding as it relates to communication with the, between the sheriff and the county board and particularly when we ask direct questions. So thank you. And I guess the um, other one was that we actually came up at our um, joint city county meeting was related to the work plan, the future work plan for the planning department. And uh, we discussed whether uh, moving forward with uh, something like the Flat River Open Space Plan um, and just kind of the fact that the planning department has not had uh, an environmental or open space planner in quite a while. And um, just, well, you know, whether that might get incorporated into maybe with the comprehensive land use plan update, but just acknowledging that, um, you know, that is something that's lagged. It was on our directives, actually, so, yeah. Well, I agree. I, I am very concerned that out of 49 staff members in the city county planning department, there is no open space planner and um, actually on the to-do list, there's 16 future items that uh, are, were made priorities by either the city or the county a few years ago. And the development of uh, an open space plan for the Flat River is number 16 and has just been there for a long, long time. So, but without a planner, I don't know how it would get done. And we used to have one, but mm -hmm. more, more famous. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an issue for the county, and we were also made aware of the split between what they, time they spend on city work and time they spend on county work, and it's about 70% on city work and 30% on county work. And we're splitting the cost 50-50. Is that, an, is that an ILA? Is that an interlocal agreement? It is an interlocal agreement um, that is currently under examination, and all of those interlocal agreement, um, agreements are uh, under review right now and uh, will be incorporated uh, for some additional recommendations in respect to those splits uh, as we move forward with the uh, 2021. Okay. Um. And I really could not remember what we decided about our plans for the DS, old DSS building, or how we left that conversation. You'll let us know. <laughs> <laughs> that was also in the directives, yeah, Harry. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner, um, at our last conversation, I think back in the um, retreat, uh, was it back in November? 
um, you authorized Jay and I to move forward with getting DFI to do a pre-development okay. process. Okay, right, similar to what okay. We did with 300 and 500. We're okay. awaiting that proposal. We reviewed the scope of work with them. So as soon as we get that proposal and once it's uh, fully vetted, we'll be bringing that forward to you guys for approval. So that is our path moving forward. Okay. Yeah. And is the separation between the two buildings happening right now? Is that the work that's happening? We actually had to hold off on that contingent upon what we do with DSS Main. Okay. We are afraid to separate the utilities not knowing what we're actually going to do okay. in the long term. And so uh, once we make a decision on that, we'll be able to move forward with uh, the separation. Okay, so the work that's going on right now outside the building, that's something totally different. That is general services doing maintenance on the gutter system. That does not have anything to do with okay. the okay. work we're doing All right. inside. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, so, Mr. Carter. Couldn't find, I couldn't follow the link, but um, did think of five agenda items that I feel like are things we've had on our agenda but haven't um, seen move forward yet, or I just don't know where we are with them. So I don't necessarily need an answer to every one of these, but I thought I'd like to at least throw them out there. Maybe some of them could be answered easily, I don't know. Um, one is the quarterly management reports. I don't remember seeing one in a while. Have I well, have I got one in the fall for the first quarter. Well, can that Second manager respond? Mr. Manager, I'm... Based on the last conversation we had, um, we are producing the quarterly management reports. Quarterly. <laughs> Give me annual report or wondering what we can expect. Because and also in the last year's budget we had money for a transit position, a racial equity officer, an early childhood system coordinator. I know we're I think we're in the process of hiring an early Childhood Systems Coordinator, because I asked about it earlier, but I don't know anything about the transit position or the racial equity officer position, and, you know, it's almost time to start 2021 budget, so wondering where we are with those. So, Joanne, I think you're, or you want to talk about the racial equity one. I can essentially tell you while Joanne's coming to the um, microphone, we are at the transit position uh, is being advertised, um, and that's where we are at that uh, position. Joanne will talk about the um, racial equity position. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, the racial equity officer posting closed about a week and a half ago, um, and um, we're in the process of reviewing those and scheduling uh, interviews this month so that someone hopefully will come on board in March. Great. Great. Um, and then the interlocal agreement with the city regarding the sales tax, is, is that one of the interlocal agreements? Uh, the interlocal agreement with the sales tax, on the sales tax, the uh, city manager and I are um, in uh, discussions uh, regarding uh, that particular item. Um, and subsequently, uh, a correspondence is going back uh, to him uh, this week uh, regarding that, and uh, we hope to uh, have some negotiations between now and the time that we have um, to wrap up this issue in respect to making a decision to let the state know what we're actually yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't hear you, Mr. Manager. Would you repeat that? I was just simply saying that um, where we are on that in local agreement discussion on sales tax is, is essentially here. Uh, there's a correspondence going back to the city manager this week. Um, and subsequently, we hope between now and the mid-March, we will uh, be able to negotiate um, during that period or at least get an answer in respect to where we are because we obviously have an April deadline in terms of what we will have to notify the state of regarding the split. And so that's where we are now. Oh, okay. I see right here. Just the exit door. So, Mr. Manager, I'm going to suggest that you provide, since that item is so important, to provide um, briefings to everyone on that and keep everyone posted on that since that's a really critical issue. We'll do it in our March one-on-one -on -one briefing. And then um, the other agenda item that I'm interested in 
and hope for his feasibility study for the implementation of our 100 renewable energy. Gone anywhere? Commissioners, I, I know that Tobin Freed is in the process of um, completing or formulating an RFQ uh, to go out uh, to engage that consultant. I, quite honestly, I need to get an update from her on, on where she is, but I, I know she is working on that. So it, Happening in some fashion. It, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Gary. Okay. Um, Next item we have is our resolution on the Triangle Trails Initiative. And I'll let you, uh, Commissioner Reckow, you and I were both at that meeting and with um, the manager and Jane Corist uh, from our staff and um, Patrick Young from the planning department. I'll let you fill everybody in on that. Okay. Um we were invited to a meeting uh, that uh, Sig Hutchinson from Wake County and Chuck Flink, who's a open space and trails consultant in the area, and he's uh, president of Greenways Incorporated. That's his consulting firm. Uh, they came to Durham to meet with uh, us and our staff about an initiative that would be a multi-county regional trails and greenway initiative. And he pointed out that there's two other regional initiatives in the state, one in the Charlotte area and one north of there, kind of in the triad area. And, and our initiative would basically, by if, if all the counties they're targeting um, became involved, it would it would connect to the trails initiative to the west of us. Um, and the vision basically, it's very positive, would be that they want to engage the private sector in helping to fund greenways and trails. And so um, the goal would be to uh, not necessarily seek public dollars, for the initiative, they're raising private dollars to do the plan. And um, uh, so we're not being asked for any money. We're just being asked to agree to participate in the sense of um, uh, having our 299 square miles part of this regional planning process might be periodic interaction with Jane Corist as our open space planner, but it didn't seem to be uh, an onerous burden at all. She was there. Um, so we all pretty much nod our heads. The manager was in attendance, and Jane Corist and uh, Wendy and me. Um, Chuck Flink, for those who don't know him, did the plan for the American Tobacco Trail a long, long time ago. I, I worked with him on that in the sense that I was on an advisory committee that worked on that plan, and he did a great job. Uh, so he has a long track record in this field. He actually has just come out with a book um, on greenways. So a lot of bona fides, and I think it's great that he wants to take this on and try to really um, create a broad system so that, and, and I think it's key if you look at the, the resolution, this is not just about recreation, it's about transportation. And it's a, a great way for people to get to work or school. Um, so creating a network of trails can be an economic boost um, in addition to enhancing um, health and um, recreational opportunities, et cetera. So, um, and the resolution does cover those points. And I, I just wanted to add, I had, I had also sent out to everyone today 
Uh, I wanted to add an additional um, whereas yeah. um, to that, which I will read. Um, I don't know if everyone has seen it. Um, now I'm trying to find where I saw. Oh, here it is. Um, I really wanted to emphasize that what I thought was missing from the resolution is that, you know, bike and pedestrian paths are also about transportation and connecting people to work and education and wherever else that they need to go. And we know that, you know, biking is, some, is an affordable, accessible means of transportation for people. Um, and so we need to be increasing that uh, equitable access to greenways and bikeways and as a means of transportation for people, not just for recreation. And also, um, I wanted to add something referring to the fact that this is one of the ways that we can address climate change and congestion on our roads, reduce carbon emissions, and I, I didn't think that was really addressed in the resolution, so. Um, the second whereas does talk about transportation and accessibility and economic benefits, but I thought your wording was good and, and you did have a couple points in that that, that aren't covered here, like um, emphasizing off-road um, paths. And uh, so I, I don't have a problem um, with adding that in at some place in the resolution. Okay. So I would, any other questions or comments? Commissioner Carter. So I think this is super exciting um, and just really agree that it's a number of our cross-cutting goals, um, all the ones you've already mentioned, you guys have already mentioned. Um, one question I would have is, as this moves along and we are doing this sort of regional planning, hopefully designing, linking up, you know, undeveloped landscapes, looking at the resolved clause, how will we um, try to follow our blueprint for equitable engagement? Do we, do, have we had any talk about that? Or how, how will this integrate with sort of our local? I know there's a lot of emphasis on equitable engagement of all communities that are affected. And so I'm just wondering if there was any discussion of that. I think that'll be an important thing to consider. We did not discuss that, but it's a good point. Um, I think we could bring that up. I find with these kinds of things that getting just some draft out that people could react to. And we need to remember these will be I think they're going to be ones that are along um, major, they'll be, they'll be connecting links. So these will be long routes probably that go from county to county. Um, I know there's talk right now, for example, of get, trying to get an off-road path even along I-40, just to give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, so it wouldn't be right along the road, but offset, so that people could get across the region conceivably by bike. Mm -hmm. But um, so all I'm saying is, is it's going to be, uh, they're, they're not going to be taking people from neighborhoods to their local elementary school or high school, I don't believe. It's going to be um, those bigger connecting links or doing what the American Tobacco Trail does in terms of that cuts across three counties. It goes from Durham into Chatham and then Wake. Yeah, so. Yeah, but the American Tobacco Trail also does run through a lot of neighborhoods. Because the old rail bed did, yeah. Anyway, I'm just thinking there might be opportunities mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. engaging communities around the link. Right. Line. Well, definitely. And I mean, another uh, railroad that we may eventually get access to would be the one that goes north mm -hmm. and goes up 
into northern Durham and on into Person County. There's a wonderful railroad bed there. So, and, and to the degree that it does go near neighborhoods involving them very early on in the planning, which is what happened with the American Tobacco Trail. We actually used to meet, um, I remember going to meetings in the community room at Woodcroft because the trail went right by the side of I live eastern off, edge I of live Wood. I mile post six. Okay. Well, it went right by yeah. Yeah. And there's Woodcroft. also the trail that goes from Apex all the way to East Durham, which we saw recently on, on that trail, on the trip. Well, I just yeah. bring this I, it's up. It's a good point. It's, it's, it's a, a very it's good a, point. It's a common topic of discussion at the BPAC meetings, mm -hmm. the full engagement of the communities. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's the big belt line the city's working on? The Duke belt line. Yeah, the Duke belt line. I mean, that was... Mm -hmm. There was concern that it was going to lead to gentrification and displacement because it was an investment, you know. So mm -hmm. we just need to, yeah. I feel like we need to be sure that somehow or another, as well, we move forward, and I want it to, that, you know, we involve as many stakeholders as possible, and particularly mm -hmm. those we might not normally hear. Well, we can recommend, I think it's already, I mean, Chuck, um, knows the Durham scene because he worked so closely here years ago, but... He lives in Durham. I, yeah. Um, that I, I, I'll recommend that he work both with DOST and with B, BPAC, um, Bike and Pit. Bike Durham. And, bike yeah, Bike Durham, um, because all of those would be great groups. And then to have periodic public meetings for discussion of these initiatives, yeah. obviously. That'd be Commissioner Howerton. I just have a quick question for, I don't know, for the manager or for you, Ellen. And looking and reading through this, I don't, I don't, I can't determine, is it, who is, who is the, who is, who's the designated county that's responsible for it? There isn't one. So all the counties are equal. We're all partners. And the person, the connecting link will actually be this Triangle Trails Initiative, which will be a separate um, group headed up by Chuck Flink that will be raising money. So they're going to be their own nonprofit, raising money and leading the initiative. Um, but so, the, the, so there, it talks about a foundation, but it really doesn't give someone that doesn't have a background or any any information about this as to who, where is the point person or the point organization. Um, just have a little bit of problem with who's going to be responsible for it. Well, on the, on the cover page, it does say that Chuck Flink, president of Greenways Incorporated, is the point person. On the resolution? It, doesn't that, say it, that. it says it in the, on the cover, the action, agenda action form. I mean, the purpose of this is just a first step of going around to many, many counties and just getting everyone to say, yeah, this is a great idea. And we don't have to put up any money, but you can form this foundation and raise money and then come back and help us build trails and greenways in our communities. So it's, 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 it's really, and he gave examples of where this has been done in other parts of the country and totally without, you know, foundations and private sector money uh, coming in and helping counties to build infrastructure like this. Um, and that's, that's the vision of just really, just like we have roads connecting counties in our state, the idea of having this, an alternative system uh, that will help a lot of rural counties really need, uh, things like this can really help them with economic development. And so it's, it's really just a first step. But these are all great questions, and certainly, Ellen, you can follow up with what some of the questions that our board 
had related to previous yeah. resolution. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll second it. All right. Can we add the whereas mm -hmm. that I suggested? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moved by Commissioner Carter. Second it. Second by Commissioner Reckow. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the resolution is passed. With Ellen, you're going to follow up on some of the concerns that you heard okay. about equitable engagement and also exactly what how is this going to work? I'm just indifferent about it because I don't I don't get the essence of it. Uh, so I guess I'm going to I'm not going to vote on it because it I I don't get it. So yeah uh, yeah I'm not good. I didn't vote. You got you've got to so, vote. so I vote no. Okay. I don't get the essence of it at all. So then I vote no. You're voting no? Okay, do we need to re-vote then because? Four to one. Do I need to take the vote again? Four. Yeah. I, I think it's four to one. Okay. All right. Okay, so four to one with uh, Commissioner Howerton voting no. Okay, so we now have a closed session item. Board is requested to adjourn into closed session to discuss matters relating to location or expansion of industries or other businesses in the area served by the public body, including agreement on a tentative list of economic development incentives that may be offered by the public body in negotiations pursuant to General Statute 143-318.11A4. How may we go into closed session for the reasons stated? Second. Moved by Commissioner Carter, seconded by Commissioner Reckow. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we're unanimously adjourned to closed session.
We have adjourned from closed session and given direction to staff. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, wait. We actually, before we adjourn, uh, Commissioner Hill would like a, an excused absence from our work session on March 2nd. He's going to be at the NACO conference. So I moved. Did we excuse <laughs> for that meeting. Second. Thank you. Moved by Commissioner Carter, seconded by Commissioner Reckow. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? You are unanimously excused from that meeting. And I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Reckow, seconded by Commissioner Hill. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're unanimously adjourned.